So um, my name is Lindsay Payne, and I'm the Director for Service Learning at the Office of Engagement. And I also teach in the Environmental and Ecological Engineering Department. So I spend a lot of time working with community partners, students, faculty around community engagement, that space itself. Um, so we've are, I've been in here twice now already. We've talked uh, about um, how to kind of identify your own like biases and the, what we call positionality when you come to projects. And then we also talked about kind of the top 10 ways projects fail and how we can avoid those kinds of failures. And today we're gonna talk about reflection, okay? Which I would argue in many ways is perhaps one of the more important things that we do when we do these projects. So the first thing I want you guys to do is to either get out a piece of paper, get out your computer, your phone, whatever it is, something to write on, all right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question and I want you to jot down ideas, thoughts, and response to the question, okay? So I don't care what you use, if it's a computer or your phone, but get something written down, so to speak. Okay, so the question is, think back through the last nine weeks of the semester, all right? So the last nine weeks, which is hard to believe that the semester is almost on its way over. Describe one lesson you've learned in regards to your academic life as a student. So maybe it's related to studying, maybe it's related to doing homework, um, maybe it's related to exams, maybe it's related to working with professors, whatever it might be, but describe one lesson you've learned. Just describe it. And it doesn't have to be complete sentences. I don't care, just ideas and thoughts. Describe it. So we're answering this question. On a piece of paper, on your phone, doesn't matter, just some brief ideas. Okay, everybody got something written down? No? Does anybody need a few more minutes? Okay. Okay, so we have a small enough group today that I, I think we can kind of share some of these out. So I'll let you talk to a neighbor, and then I'll call in a couple of the pairs so you can share out your lesson that you've learned. So do that real quickly. <laughs> Put you in one of those groups. I don't know. We got three. Yeah, jo join him. <laughs> 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 
OK, so anybody want to share one lesson they've learned from your group? Could be your lesson or someone else that someone shared for you. One lesson you learned. What do you guys learn? Oh, um, sure. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> one lesson. I don't know. I guess it's from ethics, but applying it to like the rest of being a student. Okay. When someone's like created a framework with lots of experience and like is an expert at something, it's sometimes it's okay to like read that framework instead of like uh, trying to like do your own thing or like get help ah. when you need it kind of thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. So rather than reinventing the wheel, as we would say, like imitate, like copying, it's kind of like a form of imitation in some ways. If in, copying is the wrong word, but using that to guide your process, right? That's that's a good lesson. Okay, what else? What's another? It's another lesson you've learned. Yeah. I that one-on-one -on -one conversations are very beneficial. Sometimes being in a giant group can be a little overwhelming, uh, but sometimes one-on-one -on -one conversations really help you. Okay. All right. Okay. Another one. Give me two more. Two more quick lessons. Yeah. Keep a running list of assignments and the due dates. Right. That's. Very helpful, isn't it, to be successful across classes? Because it's not always obvious, right? In all of your syllabuses and all of the examples you have online, right? To keep it running total. Yeah. And something in general, uh, whatever you're doing, you need to keep good documentation and notes. Uh, whether it's uh, notes for a math class or notes for your design project. Right. Class, for example, you need, you need good documentation. You do, because life will happen and you'll forget things. You might get older, you forget things more easily. You might stop sleeping less and you'll be sleep deprived and you th forget things. So it is important to document. That's really good. One more? Anybody wants to share that? I know I said two more, but I, I'm getting greedy. One more. How about you guys? What did, one you had? <laughs> well, just in general, we were talking about how, like, school in general, I think a lot of people put like a lot of pressure on themselves to do really well. And then when they do poorly, like they don't know how to handle it. And now that like we're seniors and like I have like I have a job offer and like I feel like I shouldn't have put all that pressure on myself because in the grand scheme of things like everything still worked out and like it didn't really matter as much as I thought it did. Okay. All right. So you're kind of getting to the next step. So you guys you guys describe something. Now I want you to go beyond that and I want you to tell me how you're going to apply this lesson or how you have applied it to life, ethics projects, academic success. What are you going to do? Write that down. Or just talk to each other. Let's just talk. So what will you do? How are you going to apply this lesson? How are you going to apply the lesson? What was your lesson? Okay, my lesson is that like, I actually need to study sometimes. Okay. Then applying it is studying for tests. Okay. I mean, <coughs> be more specific. <laughs> An hour before, weeks before, multiple times. What's your strategy? No, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Because like before the last midterms that I had, I told mm -hmm. myself I was going to start like a week before, and then okay. it ended up being like thirty minutes. So. So yeah. maybe the lesson learned is actually figuring out how to balance your schedule better so that you can put all the stuff in there, right? Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. Okay. 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 How are you going to apply this? Someone share out. How are you going to apply your lesson learned? Yes. So we talked about like um, setting time aside to like do like the preparation and things like that because right now it's kind of hard in the middle of the semester mm -hmm. to find that. So Kay. just like holding yourself accountable. Okay. So setting yourself time. Setting up. Okay. Weekly basis. Daily basis. Weekly basis. Okay. All right. How about someone else? What was your lesson learned and how are you going to apply it? I mean, it's great if you learn. But if you don't have a plan for applying it, does it matter? Uh, uh, maybe. Okay, so how are you going to apply this? 
I know it's a rainy day. We all really be in bed sleeping. But <laughs> how are you going to apply your lessons learned? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. For instance, maybe when I get like a full-time job five years down or a couple years down the road. Okay. Not five years. Because <laughs> um, you are you are you senior? Junior. junior. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully not five yeah. years, right? Okay. All right. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing some sort of engineering work or okay. CS work. Um, maybe go consult anybody and everybody I know who might be an expert or might know something okay. before I go and try and uh, build something or right. design something. Okay. All right. Get documentation on that and read that through. And Good. That. Okay. So really thinking concretely about how you can apply that, like you know, if there's experts in the field, how do you reach out to them to increase your expertise? What was your lesson learned? Um, kind of with hers. I'm a senior right now. And okay. I feel like stressing out. Um, I pulled a couple all-nighters once to study for an exam. And Those are terrible, aren't they? Do better than people nope. didn't. So. No, nope, never do. So what? So what will you do with it? Um, learning to relax and like actually just balance time better. Okay. Like all work and like no plays, not better than. Not good for anyone, so right? Just that, everything in life. So how do you carve out that time? Because you guys, you all said the same thing, right? All three of you have the same sort of, but how do you carve that out intentionally? What do you Scheduling. do? Scheduling, okay. Yeah. Do you guys come up with alternatives too? I feel like, honestly for me, it's not like a scheduling issue. It's just like not having practical stress coping mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> But that's all right. That's, so scheduling is one way of doing it. Developing mechanisms so that you can cope. Yeah. So maybe you, you, take, you do yoga classes. I don't know, yeah, right? Like, like something. OK. All right. All right. <laughs> any, any other lessons and ways you're going to actually apply them that you want to share? How about you guys? One thing you talked about. Uh, so So why would I be asking you to do this today in relation to your community engaged projects? Why would I be asking you to have these conversations? You guys are so quiet. Yeah. OK, very fundamentally, right, to practice the process, right? Do you do this in your projects? I mean, the answer should be yes, right? Because you're required to write reflections once a week. So yes should be the answer. Do you do it intentionally, though, or do you do it as kind of a quickly, dear diary, I've got to get this done so that I can get a check in the box? I see a lot of heads nodding, OK? Do you learn anything from that quick, dear diary, write it down, get the box checked process? Honest, be honest. Yes, this is recorded, but no one will see this. It's OK. Do you learn anything from that process? Probably not, right? Sometimes, maybe. But you're going to learn more from it if you take that next step and you start thinking about what you learned and how you're going to apply it. So we very often say, dear diary, this is what I did today, right? And you don't say, dear diary, at least I don't assume we do that anymore, right? But in the traditional sense, you describe something. So you do exactly what you did in the beginning, but you don't take it that next step. And that's what we really need to do with reflection so that we can change our patterns, our ways, our errors become better at what we do, right? So engineering design is, is that. Is it an iterative process of going back and forth in design with yourself, with your clients, with your community partners? Are you constantly revising and changing based on feedback? I should see heads nodding. Yes, Dr. Payne, this is true, right? OK, you do that. So you should do that internally, too. And I know it is hard to carve out time. But you will be a much better professional if you do that, let's say, on a weekly basis. So if you took 30 minutes on Fridays, I don't know, before you go have that social time that you're talking about not having because you don't balance your life, right? 30 minutes before that social time, if you sit down and you reflect on something that you did in your professional practice as a student and think about how you could do it better. All right, that's, that's what reflection really is. And the reason you do that is because we don't understand experiences if we don't really make those connections. 
We have to think about what we've seen, what we've done, and how that connects in the classroom and how we can be better at it. Okay, it's like a bridge. Think of it as a bridge. If you only do one side of the bridge, you're never going to see what's on the other side. And the other side is probably cooler. I don't know. I think of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It's all perspective, but one side of the bridge is San Francisco, the city of. The other side is wine country, Sonoma. Depending on what you value it more cool, as, as in more important, right? You might want to be on one side of the bridge, but you probably want to get to the other, right? For me, it would probably be Sonoma wine country. That's where I'd like to go, right? Okay. All right. So in this series, we've done all these things. We've, we've reflected actually in, in our sessions, right? So many of you have been in these sessions and we've done reflection. We've talked about our positionality, who we are, how it informs our practice as engineers. We've evaluated project failures. We've thought about how we're gonna respond to these issues with our community partners. So you've already done this in, in these sessions. But I wanna give you a framework for thinking about how to do that more effectively as a writer. So oftentimes we're asked to do these writing exercises, but we don't really have what I would call scaffolds or support structures for doing that. And so therefore it's hard to be effective at what you do. So if you think of your reflections as three parts, one, you're gonna describe what you did. So this is your lesson, this is what I learned in my academic space. I'm gonna describe it. Then I'm gonna examine that and I'm gonna pull it apart and I'm gonna think about why those things happen. I'm gonna look at the different angles, I'm gonna compare, I'm gonna contrast. And then at the end, I'm going to articulate what I learned. I call that the deal model. Describe, examine, articulate learning. Sorry. Do you guys get these PowerPoints, by the way? No? We have to figure out a way to do that so that you don't have to frantically take notes. That will be my reflective piece to figure out how to do that, right? So if you do these things, if you set up that framework, it's gonna make your writing more effective, all right? Does that make sense? It's simple, it's easy, but I often get, when I read reflections, a lot of this description phase, but I never get to the articulate the learning, and that's what I really wanna know, is what you're gonna do with that experience and how it's gonna inform your next actions, your next piece of your design, the next step, the next interaction you have with your stakeholder, right? Okay? So. You have a question similar to this in your reflections that are required, I believe. Jot down some notes on this question right now. I'm curious to see where we are. Have you met your original project goals? How is this impacting your project partner? And what can you do to get the project back on track if it's steering into the wrong direction? So jot down some answers to that. And think about that. Describe, examine, and articulate your learning framework. And then I'm going to have to have you guys share these out and talk. Otherwise, it's just me talking, and I don't like to hear my voice get heard.
Okay, so how many of you put that, yes, your project is on track to meet its goals? Just curious where we are. Raise your hand so I can see it. So about half of you. Okay, so then I assume I can, if I asked how many of you said that your project isn't on track that I'll get half of you to also raise your hand? Roughly? <coughs> okay, good, at least we're paying attention. Okay, so let's talk about why they're not on track. So those of you that said they aren't on track to reach their goals, what's going on? Pardon? So that, it isn't that it isn't on track. So why is it not on track to meet its goals? What's going on? Yeah. Um, I feel like we're getting kind of lost in the weeds and like spinoffs of like research and not okay. really like keeping ourselves accountable for how much time that's taking. Okay. So then what can you do since this is what's going on to make sure that that's your lesson that you're implementing? Um, start doing like weekly emails with our project partner just for our like teams like our little project specifically okay um, because that would like keep both of us accountable so like he still has like buy-in and can give us feedback but we are like still making progress and moving forward okay okay all right how about another group who's not on task yeah or track I guess. <coughs> Better say. so my my project is designing like a magnification device for kids that can't see very well. Okay. Um, and historically it's been very electronic. It's been using like apps on the iPad and all that stuff. Um, but there's this project's been going on for like six years now. Woo! So it's been a while. And there's been many, 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 many iterations of this project. Okay. Designed by many teams. Um, but looking back on hindsight, the project has Every single iteration of this project has failed because, not because it's a bad design, but because we haven't followed the design process and it, has, it doesn't connect mm. well with the students. The students don't like it. The students don't even like to learn, so like, how can you expect them to use tools to learn if they don't even like, want to learn in the first place? Oh, okay, so you're saying that the, they're not gathering appropriate feedback, perhaps, as the design process is occurring? We haven't taken enough time to understand who the students are and what mm. they want. Okay. So then what will your recommendations be? I think that's kind of, a, it's pretty common, I would say, with a lot of these projects, but what would your recommendations be or how will you address that moving forward? Addressing it, well, <coughs> first of all, is making sure we're keeping the design process in the back of our head, mm -hmm. having everybody look at that document, the really long one, right. with all the steps and stuff. Um, and then second of all, making sure that we're desi designing or defining uh, specifications and uh, <coughs> understanding the students a lot better by maybe meeting students more okay like emails, that sort of that. okay and can you do all those things like can you do it seems like the the piece of it is to meet with the students more get to know the students more are there there are ways and spaces you can do that or is that yeah, going to be a constraint visit, um, okay with them and write a lot of emails and maybe do some more research okay um, but yeah we don't really have any deadlines in mind at this point just because it's so early again okay in the process. so definitely make sure that that is documented because I think that's really important right if you know you You've had all of this history of projects not quite meeting the expectations, and so you've identified something that really needs to be done. So make sure that's implemented into your design. That's a good, good discussion. Other projects that aren't quite meeting the progress, the goals, what's expected this semester. There should have at least been maybe three or four of you. Yeah. I think for our team it was lack of backup plans. So what are, what's your team? Um, and as for working on an installation that helps kids learn about um, advanced manufacturing. So we okay. have several stations of different techniques. Okay. So part of it is that we have so many stations that we're all working on. We have three different stations currently in progress. Okay. Um, but we've had a couple of holdbacks in each station. So one station, the robot that we had, um, done a matrix on and figured out we would buy, we ordered it and it was completely different than our expectations and it was something that was not usable. Okay. Um, so that held us back by a couple of weeks because then we had to figure out what our backup was, we mm -hmm. had to go back through the matrix, where did we go wrong, okay. and things like that. So that was the hold back in one. And then in others, some of it was just um, not ordering pieces we needed soon enough, not being... Okay. Um, as proactive as it should okay. have been. So then how do you address that moving forward? Um, some of it is better planning and maybe being able to work ahead while we're behind. Mm -hmm. um, 
So work on the things that are later down the road. Right. Some of the documents we need to write up and things like that instead of just mm -hmm. waiting or doing little knick-knacky things while waiting or, help, you know. Right. So there's some things that we could do to work ahead while behind. And I think we could have done Kay. that a little better. So have any of you come up with a really good way to handle those unexpected things that have happened in your projects? Because, you know, for example, you, you got this robot, right, that was not what you wanted, not what you expected. And so how, do, how, how have others come across those issues? How do you handle that in your projects? You don't? What have you done to try and handle this? This happened. That's part of the, the design process, right? We don't design in a vacuum, right? There's external forces everywhere that are impacting our design. So how do you handle that uncertainty? What do you do? What have you been doing? Okay, to, to what end? Okay, so you've been trying to dissect the problem and figure out what to do from there. Okay, so having different alternatives or options, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it depends on what ideas you come up with. Okay, and anybody else been doing anything to effectively handle those situations? No, they've not gone well. Has anybody had that happen? Yes. How did you address it moving forward? What did you do? I mean, you addressed it, right? So what did you do? My goodness, you guys are quiet today. What happened? Recognize yeah? that a mistake was made with, um, I would say, planning. OK. Usually, usually that actually is not the planning for me. Because like, when I spent time at GM, they always planned for the fact that like something might take twice the time as it yeah it should so you have to um, you know put that into your project plan is like whenever you're planning something you got to expect that it might take a week or two more than okay so you've added in extra time to handle the uncertainty okay have, has anyone done anything else to try and address uncertainty or or handle it if it, it gets thrown in their face yeah no, go ahead. We'll, well, both of you can go. Well, like I said, we kind of started pulling on things that we knew would be coming in the future. Okay. So, like, some of the documents, like, the, we knew we would still be able to deliver soon at the end of the semester mm -hmm. with it, but we know, like, all of that documentation that has to go with it, like, the delivery checklist, we can start, like, kind of going through, like, do we already have that? The uh, manual for how to use it and things like that, we can go ahead and start kind of putting mm -hmm. that together and piecing it together and like, okay. looking at what it would be like. Okay. So kind of, like I said, looking ahead while still being a little behind and then catching back up on what this okay. needs to be done. All right. And how about you guys? Um, well, I was going to say like, something I've noticed is, so I'm like actually a project manager. I don't like sit on a particular sub team in my okay. team. But something I've noticed is like sometimes everybody on the team like gets really fixated on one idea. Mm -hmm. So it like prevents them from examining other ideas. But I think what's really beneficial is when you start working on your project, you allocate some people to focus on alternative ideas. Mm. That mm -hmm. way, if something that doesn't go right, there's like a new expert for that sure. new idea, Kay. and they can um, lead with that new idea. Right. Yeah, that's a great way to kind of. It's a fail-safe sort of like you've created like Plan C and D just in case you need it. Right. Something else you could do is is perhaps increase the frequency in which you're communicating with those you're designing for. They may have different ideas. They may have, no, I doubt this is the case, but they may have been able to use that robot even though it didn't meet your expectations. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So have that open communication line so you can figure out how to handle it.